Hi, I am Tom Christensen of Neurochrome. In this video, I'll be taking a look at these BK Precision 9115B power supplies. They are 1200 watt power supplies. They provide 0 to 80 volts out at 0 to 60 amps. Now, some of you are going, wait a minute, 60 times 80 is 4800. So clearly, there are some limitations here. Once you get above 20 volts on the output, the output current is limited to ensure that you stay below 1200 watts. So for example, at uh, 30 volts output, you get 40 amps of output current. These power supplies will set you back $2,350 a piece. I bought a pair of these for my own money. This is not a paid review. And my plan is to power my higher powered audio amplifiers such as the Modulus 686 from Neurochrome. I have been using these HP uh, 6643A power supplies and they provide really, really good performance, but unfortunately not enough output power. So that's where these guys will hopefully come in. I also really appreciate that they're fairly light. They only weigh 8.6 kilograms a piece and also that they come in this one rack unit form factor. That's pretty cool. On the front panel of this BK Precision 9115B, we find a power switch, a fairly sizable display, and that is of the vacuum fluorescent type, so that sort of green VCR type display, and I actually really appreciate that. I like that better than the LCD. Um, the display indicates output voltage and output current, and also the output power. We have a pair of encoders, and they, they actually feel pretty nice. The knobs are a little bit grippy, so that's pretty cool. There's some function keys and also a keypad for setting the output voltage and output current. On the back side, we find the central attraction here, and that is the output. And that is a pretty beefy pair of terminals that are protected by this fairly thin piece of plexiglass. Um, the terminals have six millimeter socket head bolts in them. So you'll need some decent sized ring terminals to go with these. To compensate for the cable loss between the output and the load, this power supply supports remote sensing. That's handled on this connector here. As you can see right now, it's configured for local sensing. Uh, and that can be seen with these two jumpers being installed into the connector. You pull those jumpers and then you run a shielded pair of uh, wires down to the load and that's how remote sensing is done. And in addition, we have a couple of fan exhausts and also an option for GPIB. And that is handy for remote control of the power supply. And that costs $300 extra, so I chose to go without it. If you want GPIB, you need to get the 9115B-AT. This one here has RS-232, RS-485 for control, and then also uh, a USB port. And you can remote control it with a program that runs on a PC. When the power supply starts up, it starts up like this. If we turn the encoders for current and voltage, nothing happens, and that's sort of odd. Um, but that's because the power supply is measuring the output voltage at the output terminals, or rather at the sense terminals. If we then hit the meter button, now we get the actual set point of the power supply. And to set this with the encoder, uh, it's one of these dial and dial a digit sort of interfaces. I think it would have been a little more convenient if it had worked like a multi-turn potentiometer, so a continuous control, but I mean, this works well enough. And certainly, I mean, even if you rotate the encoders pretty fast, the display and the power supply response instantly. So that part is great. You set the voltage with the VSET function and then I set uh, for the current. It's a little bit curious that you can't change them independently uh, without having to uh, select the appropriate function here, but that's how it works. And you can also enter the output voltage and current directly on the keypad. The, um, the beep, yeah, that's pretty annoying, <laughs> but you, you can turn it off. So um, it's really no big deal. Don't like it, just turn it off. The power supply has been sitting idle for the past 20 minutes or so, and that has resulted in a bit of heat buildup inside of it, and the fan has turned on. I'm a little bit surprised by that because, I mean, it shouldn't really dissipate much power when it just sits idle, but evidently it does. The fan, I mean, I wouldn't say it's super loud, but it's also not super quiet. 
it sort of reminds me of a computer server or something like that. And I mean, it is the same form factor of the chassis. So anyway, without further ado, let's look at the programming and read back accuracy of this power supply. I have it set to 30.000 volts on the display and I will turn it on. We'll measure the output voltage with the digital voltmeter. And as you can see, the output voltage is off by about four millivolts. And let's hit the null button here. So now we measure relative to that uh, point there. I'm going to increase the supply voltage by one millivolt at a time here. So plus one, plus one more. Oh, nothing happens. Even though it does say 30.002 on the display, one more. Now it jumps by two millivolts and one more and one more. So it's not exactly a precision instrument here. I think they should drop at least one, one of the digits off of the display here, but I mean, it's just as easy to just ignore it. Let's try with a hundred millivolt steps instead. So plus 100, plus 200, 300, 400, 500. That seems to work just fine. And let's also try one volt steps. And that seems pretty spot on. Now let's try the constant current mode. I have the current limit set to two amps and by running the output of the power supply directly into my ammeter, I am able to measure the current in con constant current mode. So let's do that like that. And I have 2.000 amps indicated on the display on the front and the meter reads 1.997 amps. That's well within spec. And that actually goes for the constant voltage as well. Now let's take a look at the output voltage of the power supply as I turn it on. It's of course important that when you turn on a power supply that it doesn't fry the load that's connected to it. Um, and that can happen if the power supply has overshoot on the output voltage. So let's take a look at that. I have the supply set for 30 volts and two amps current limit. I have it loaded with a 16 ohm resistor. And now let's look at the output voltage with an oscilloscope. And I will turn the power supply on like that. And we see that the power supply ramps up pretty smoothly and settled at the final output voltage. There's a little bit of an overshoot there, just a little bit of a glitch. And I don't think that's enough to really worry about. It's just there. So this is, this is all right. Let's try the same test with 3.3 volts, just to see if this high voltage power supply can also power, you know, common logic. And that's pretty cool. The supply jumps up instantly to 3.3 volts and settles there with no tendency to overshoot whatsoever. That's, that's pretty impressive. We can take a look with a, a faster time sweep here just to make sure it doesn't do anything funky. So this is with 500 microseconds per division. And the supply ramps up smoothly, no overshoot, a little bit of a wobble here, but that's no big deal. So this is cool. Even this 80 volt power supply can actually power 3.3 volt logic. Now let's take a look at the constant current mode. I have the supply configured for 30 volts with a two amp current limit, and I have it loaded with eight ohms on the output. So that means when I turn the output on, it should hit that two amp current limit and the voltage should settle to about 16 volts following Ohm's law. So let's check that out on the scope like that. And as you can see, the power supply makes this quick jump and then settles smoothly to the two amps on the uh, output. And that's pretty cool. That's, I mean, this is exactly what you want a constant current mode in the power supply to do. Let's take a look at the performance of this power supply with a static load. This is an electronic load. It's a BK Precision 8600B. It will draw six amps from the uh, power supply. The load is limited to 150 watts, so I have set the output voltage to 24 volts. 24 times 6 is 144 watts, so just below the limit. And I have set the current limit on this guy for 6.1 amps. And now let's look at the output voltage as the load is turned on. As we see here, 
the output voltage is 23.997 with the load off and now with the load on 23.996 so it drops by a millivolt that's pretty good that is measured directly at the output terminals by the way it is relatively straightforward for a power supply to deliver a constant voltage into a constant load it is quite another matter to deliver a constant voltage into a load that is dynamic i.e changing over time and examples of dynamic loads could be like a light bulb that turns on and off or digital logic that is switching or something like an audio power amplifier and that's where it becomes relevant for me I have set up this electronic load to mimic the load current of an AB or class AB power amplifier. So it will draw 60 milliamps or roughly the quiescent current of a class AB output stage for the first half of the cycle. And then for the second half of the cycle, it will draw 3.75 amps. And that's roughly equal to the peak output current or the peak load current rather into that class AB output stage. So let's look at the output voltage of the power supply with this kind of a load. The oscilloscope shows the output voltage in yellow and the current monitor of the electronic load in green. And as you notice, the, there's a bit of a jitter in the waveform, so it's not the most precise clock source in this uh, electronic load, but that's okay. The most important point here is that the output voltage gets really gnarly when it's presented with this kind of a load. And it seems to ring quite a bit and it takes quite a while for it to become stable. In fact, I don't think it has stabilized fully in this uh, oscilloscope picture here. This measurement was done at one kilohertz. Let's try and repeat it at 100 hertz and see if that allows the power supply to settle fully. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Uh, so, uh, no, not really. So this is 100 hertz. And you can see the trace bottoms out right here. So let me see if I can, oops. Okay, so I changed the vertical sensitivity of the scope here. So we actually get a one volt dip when the load current kicks in and then it settles out fairly quickly after, ah, uh, it looks like maybe it takes two milliseconds for it to settle. But then when the load current drops, it takes quite a bit of time for it to ramp down. It does eventually ramp down to the correct output voltage but uh, this is a uh, this is pretty gnarly and actually there's an electronic load inside the BK9115 that could maybe uh, make this come down a little bit faster so let me try and turn that on okay so this is with the electronic load inside the power supply turned on and that doesn't really change anything huh so that's that's a bit unfortunate and now for the real world test. I have these two BK9115B powering this audio power amplifier. The amplifier is based on the LM3886 by Texas Instruments. It is your prototypical class AB audio power amplifier. And as you can see here in the audio precision software, I have the an audio analyzer configured such that the amplifier provides 40 watts into 8 ohms. And you can see that the distortion is mm, kind of sort of okay, but a bit higher than what we saw with the HP power supply. And let's see what the distortion sweep looks like. So as one would expect, the distortion is quite a bit higher with these power supplies and that appears to be the case across frequency. I'll just let the sweep finish and then we'll take a look at why that might be the case. Let's have a look at the FFT. So this shows the harmonic content of the output of the power amplifier and we see a bit of mains hum but mostly what I notice is these spikes here that appear to sit around 50 kilohertz and I bet that's the switching frequency of these power supplies. We can filter those out in the software by changing the measurement bandwidth to 40 kilohertz. Let's just double check the FFT here to make sure that that content is actually filtered out. So the maroon trace here is the current measurement and most of that switching garbage has been filtered out. So let's rerun the distortion sweep. 
and this certainly looks a lot better. Now it is basically line on line with the HP power supplies. Okay, so this is interesting. Something is definitely going on around like 150, 180 hertz, give or take. But aside from that, this power supply actually provides pretty decent performance. It's just unfortunate with this hump here, because that basically makes it useless, or at least not very usable in my application. Let's have a look at the output voltage of the power supply as it is powering the audio amplifier that provides 40 watts into 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz. That's what we see here on the scope. The green trace here is the output current of the power supply and the yellow trace is the output voltage. And that, this actually doesn't look too bad. It looks like maybe 100-ish millivolts peak to peak of ripple on the output of the power supply. And that's just caused by the finite output impedance of the power supply. This is quite similar to what we saw on the uh, HP power supply actually. So that explains why uh, these power supplies and the HP power supplies cause this amplifier to provide very similar distortion performance. But you remember that hump on the distortion plot at about 150 hertz? Let's explore that a little bit. So here I have changed the frequency to 150 hertz and we immediately see that the output voltage on the scope is actually you know off the rails here. So let's crank the sensitivity down a bit and now it looks like we have uh, over a volt peak to peak of ripple on the output of this power supply. So these guys appear to have some non-linearity in their output impedance or at least with 150 hertz test frequency they provide a remarkably worse performance and unfortunately that makes them not very useful if not downright useless in my application and i have actually worked extensively with the support guys at bnk precision they were super helpful and responded uh, very quickly actually and we worked on it for about two weeks and could not uh, resolve this so unfortunately these are going to have to go back to the distributor Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was informative. If you found it informative, drop me a like. And also, if you have suggestions for how can I can improve these videos, drop them in the comments. I do read the comments. I might not always get around to responding quickly, but I will read them. So, thanks for watching. Have a great day.